I'm the Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with the Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm fantastic, I'm so excited this is finally happening. Awesome. Awesome, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I have to say, welcome to Canada. So we are here at Smash Wrestling in Toronto. Yeah, this is my first time in Canada. I'm super excited. Some crazy stuff has happened. We don't mm -hmm. need to go into detail. <laughs> <laughs> but this city is very exciting. And I don't even know if I've seen a fraction of what it has to offer yet. Oh, <laughs> I think not. I need to hang around longer. Let's <laughs> just say what you saw was pretty exciting, though. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. We just saw you face up against John Green, and some of the stuff you pull off, it's just insane. Like, there were so many holy shit moments throughout <laughs> that match. It's crazy. Uh, so how do you feel everything went down? I felt like it was a great match. It was a very hard-fought effort. It was uh, a victory that was well-deserved because I feel like I'm a tough match. <laughs> um... But it, it, was, it was super fun. He's a really talented wrestler. Um, the crowd was awesome. It was super exciting to make my debut in my third country. Mm -hmm. um, I have been wanting to come to Canada, and specifically Smash Wrestling, for a really long time now. So I am just full of smiles today. <laughs> I love being here right now. <laughs> you recently told fans that you're willing to take on anyone, anywhere. So do you just feel like everywhere. the time... Everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Nice little nice. Everywhere. Okay. <laughs> That just drilled in your mind. Before I get to the question, that just drilled in your mind. Anytime you a word is spoken that start, if it's a compound word mm -hmm. and it starts with every, it must be said in like threes. <laughs> <laughs> it's never gonna leave you. It, this isn't a written rule or anything, but I like, it's an unwritten rule right now. Okay. It, it is a, it's in the Geneva Convention as of now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going back to wanting to wrestle anywhere and everywhere. Uh, do you kind of just feel like this is the year that a lot of stuff's going to happen? Absolutely. A lot happened for me last year, and I'd like to think that it all started with, like, WrestleCon weekend. Um, and I was only in two matches, WrestleCon weekend. It was um, the Pancakes and Power Drivers show, which was mm -hmm. the weirdest, most exciting show I'd ever been a part of. And it was weird in the sense that I forgot the theme of the show, and about ten minutes into the match, I'm on the ground with a bruised eye and my hands and knees are in pancakes and I forgot why I go mm -hmm. why are these pancakes <laughs> everywhere and it didn't dawn on me until I was eating them later that, that oh yeah this the is the pancakes right. and power driver show <laughs> but uh I feel like 2017 was the year of a lot of doors just being cracked for me and this is the year to burst them open burst them right open mm -hmm. break them down right off the hinges where is one place that you would absolutely love to take your craft? And not just wrestle, but kind of just experience the whole, whole thing. I really, I really, really, really want to get over to the UK right now. Um, Zach and Des have been over there so many times, along with Dave, Jake, and Sammy. And I haven't been yet, and it's something I really want to experience. Um, about a year ago, I never saw myself traveling internationally. It was, it was something I didn't think that would happen. And I did two tours of Mexico last year, and now I'm here in Canada. And... Like, I just every time you knock a, uh, knock a door and you realize that, like, you can kick them all down. Mm -hmm. And now I want to, I'm, I'm knocking on UK's door. <laughs> if anyone is watching this from the United Kingdom, I'm the fresh prince of everything and everywhere and everyone. So book me. I love that you brought up the nickname once again, because I did introduce you as the fresh prince. Oh, no, I'm bringing the, It's good that you did. <coughs> I have to, I'm so sorry. No, don't I'm worry. still trying to catch my wind. I, I got my butt kicked out there. <laughs> The you can hit I, all the impressive moves you want. If you lose, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I bring up the nickname is when was the first time you were coined that or you used okay. that? Okay, so one day, before, before that, I, uh, my, my brother Michael used to call me Trigger Trey because Nicki Minaj called Trey Songs that in a song. Oh my gosh. And my brothers used to always just call me Trey Songs. I have eight older brothers. And... It, it's just an ongoing joke and it actually just stuck and one day I was just like you know what uh someone asked actually someone from Detroit asked me do you have any nicknames and I was just like mm, no uh call me Trigger Trey Miguel though mm -hmm. I stuck with that for a little bit but it wasn't really much of a character or okay. anything and I was really 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 trying to find myself and Dave was trying to help me I, I was a part of OI4K and I felt like I was just being a, a little miniature Dave Chris and it wasn't really helping me branch out and find out uh, you know who I am inside of wrestling and something everyone always beats into my head is the best way to find yourself in inside of wrestling is to turn up the person you are outside of wrestling by a hundred so 
um, outside of wrestling, I used to I used to work at a van store as a manager, and I got super big into retail because as a kid I was bullied for the clothes I couldn't have and stuff like that. So I I, I get a retail job and. I became so into it. Like, I, I loved, I, I genuinely loved my job. And it was a job you could dress up and be cool. And I was like, man, that's, like that, that's me outside of wrestling. I feel like when you dress good, you look good, you feel good. Of and who doesn't want to feel good? And one day, Dave and I are just working out. And I'm like, how can I bring, like, that? You know, it's, it's not really so much substance to, like, what I just explained to you. Like, what I find myself being. Yeah, how can I embellish it? Yeah, and I was... It literally, the name just popped in my head, and I was just like, the Fresh Prince of Midair. And I had it in my head, and Dave has his headphones in, and he's in between sets, and I just go, pop. I'm sorry, I hit the mic. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, pop. And that's what I call him. Dave's my wrestling dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I go, what do you think about this? And then he, and he's like, what? And I just go, the Fresh Prince of Midair. And he's just like... <laughs> and he just peels his headphones off. I was like, kid. And I was like, yeah, I know. It's perfect. It really and is. For, and then for a year, I didn't do anything differently. <laughs> it was just a nickname. And until uh, as of recent, you have I, the crown now, I, I, have, right? I have the, the crown that is shaped like a tiara and gets a lot of heckling for it. But um, if I wore an actual crown, I would look more like Ricochet. Shh. We won't talk about that. <laughs> we, we don't. Oh, please. <laughs> is that brought up every single it time is, you do something? Like an interview? It, it got brought up today in the Are crowd. Are you serious? Yeah. I hit a dive. And so I was like. You're not Ricochet, and I, I go. I didn't hear that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help. Like, okay, I did it myself though. Um, WrestleCon weekend last year at uh, the Midnight at Mania show, someone approached me and thought I was Ricochet, and I'd gotten it so many times that weekend. I was like, No, I'm That's not Ricochet. So weird. I'm not Ricochet. I'm not Ricochet. And then you need a shirt. This guy got an inter, or he's like, Hey, Ricochet, can I get you for an interview? And I was just, I look over, and a good friend of mine is just like, You should have done. Yeah, didn't do it. And I was just well. like, I was like. Absolutely, man. So let's do this. We got a microphone. This is the camera right this here. And I don't open my mouth because I don't sound like Ricochet. So I just do like all these gestures and his hand thing. And it's, <laughs> it's super funny. And she recorded me doing the interview. So there's like two different angles of it. There's like once the interview's over, I turn around like, oh, my God, we just did that. Yeah. It's hilarious. And then about, I think last summer, I met that gentleman at Russell Circus. And he goes, Trey Miguel. I know you are not Ricochet. <laughs> <laughs> I really, like, I, I can see it, but I don't see it. Like, I, I no, know right away. I honestly know what it is. It's the shiny forehead. When, when, when ask Ricochet, we, we've, we've, Trevor, if you're watching this, it's the shiny forehead. That's what it comes <laughs> we, down we to. We have, we have agreed. Is that the reason why you decided to dye your hair? Absolutely. No, and that's what, that's what didn't work even more. So, like, I dyed <laughs> my hair because we have Arrow Lucha, I have the Fresh Prince, and then, like, the day I dye my hair, Zach's like, why'd you dye your hair? And I go, because I really have this vision that the Fresh Prince has blonde hair. When I think of a prince, I don't know why. I think of, like, he just has blonde hair or something. Okay. And, the, like, the gear is really vibrant and bright. And I go, I think it'll complement it. I'm just going to try it. If it doesn't work, it'll take, like, a month to grow out. I'll cut my hair and it'll be gone. Well, under the lights, I look bald. <laughs> <laughs> Ricochet is bald. <laughs> and I had a black beard. So more than ever, I look like Ricochet. Oh my god! So now I'm growing it out, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm getting rid of the blonde, and I I don't know. I, Maybe you can go blue or green to go with the, the gear. Who knows? I'm about to give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did mention Zach there, Zachary Wentz. So you're Zach, I love you, bro. Having he it. is killing it. Oh, hi from the. Uh, from the country of Canada, the continent. Hello, country. Oh, country, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, the first time. All right, yeah, cool. You got I, no- it. I normally don't do that unless it's a wrestling move. Okay. Well, the reason that's just tooting my own horn. No. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I bring him up is because going into this interview, I actually wanted to get a guest question or comment, so I decided to go with better <laughs> than Zachary. So instead of, oh my God, instead I'm of having already... a question, he just told me to say one word. And he said it like, Chicken! How the hell did you know that? I knew it! <laughs> chicken! He told me to say it aggressively though, like, chicken! Chicken! Yeah. Yes. What is the story? I don't know. It's his brother. His brother's like a chef. Okay. And uh, they have a nephew who they just love feeding words to because he's young and he'll repeat anything. And one day they gave him a bag of hot Cheetos and told him it was chicken. And the kid kept yelling, chicken. Mm-hmm. So now <laughs> Zach yells, chicken! And in, in 
like response i yell it back okay. <laughs> it's it's simple as it's fun. just ongoing i there's, there's no meaning to it it's not subliminal mm-hmm. it's not a password it might be his password to something i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> <laughs> but i knew the second you said he wanted me to tell you this yeah. I was like, chicken it's like how did you know that right away damn you guys really do know each other <laughs> Here's Zachary, right here. <laughs> Yesterday's our, our two-year anniversary from the first time we mm-hmm. wrestled each other. And uh, afterward, him and I bought each other a beer, which was pointless because they cost the same amount of money. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, man, I get yours, you get mine. It cost the same. I just want to do something for you, man. Me too. <laughs> exactly. And then from there, we just hit it off like no other. I knew Amazing. I had never made a connection like that with someone um, after the first time wrestling. And I just knew from that moment on, we were we were best friends and brothers and Twinkies and inseparable beings. <laughs> and NWKI to go on to jam. I can't elaborate these acronyms, but that's what happened. There are a lot. It's a lot. I can't tell you how often I got asked what JML meant. No one ever asked about NWKI, and it's the same as JML. You just won't find out. Okay. But people want to know, but it's provocative, and you can't find out. Well, you just won't tell? It gets the people going. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Well, something else that's ongoing aside from chicken is this huge debate within the wrestling community of whether Sheets or... Is it Wawa? It's Wawa. Wawa, okay. Which is better? You know, I knew the debate was coming, and I thought about something. So I think I have it figured out where, like, the line is drawn. And this is just from my own personal uh, observations. I believe people from the East Coast favor Wawa. And I believe people who travel to the East Coast prefer sheets. Okay. And that's from my experience. But if you ask me, they're both delicious. I will spend all of my weekend money on either if it's next to me. <coughs> and Like WrestleCon weekend last year, I spent all of my pay. Actually, all my pay and then the money I went down there with on Wawa, ate Wawa every day. Really? Yeah. What's well, like your go-to order there? Okay, it's the turkey, Swiss, and bacon panini. But I get it without the spinach. I'm not a real big spinach fan. Not a spinach guy. Unless it's like a part of like a salad or something. Like I just, like Trevor Lee said, that's for the birds, man. That's for, <laughs> 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 no, think about it. Like that's my food's food, man. I like, I want my cows to eat good greens. So that way I can eat a healthy cow. What, what kind of jerk is going to eat his food's food? I eat a lot of meat. <laughs> Food's food. I yeah, love that. You know? Stop eating vegetables, people. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Do you have morals? God. You don't eat vegetables, do you? I'm a meat person. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Meatitarian. <laughs> Meatitarian? That's like, hey, I'm a carnivore. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Born and raised. <laughs> Here on Amber, we not only cover wrestling, but also music. And I just want to dive right into it with you because I see a lot of nods to Tupac. So. I. Okay. Yeah. Um. My nods to Tupac. Uh, Tupac is one of my favorite artists, actually. And uh, my father is the one that introduced me to him early on. Horrible parenting. No. <laughs> um, but, like, growing up, I love listening to Tupac. I love listening to old school music. And um, something a lot of people don't know about me is that I am not Hispanic. And my middle name is Miguel. So that's why I, I beats me. Don't know. I have n- no bit of... You know, I am black and white, and um, I chose to uh, give the uh, month of Black History Month to Tupac as a nod. Okay. And that, that was just a personal decision that I made at the beginning of the month because um, I was getting ready to, like, actually debut the Fresh Prince thing, and I was just like, hey, I'm going to be me outside of wrestling. And this this is stuff that I like to do outside. Like, I, I yeah. take a lot of pride in my heritage, where I come from, uh, my family's background, and... That was just my way of a just nod. like just a little nod, and it's something that no one has asked me yet. Like no one asked what the Tupac jerseys for um, before I got the crown because the crown just came in maybe I saw you two weeks the ago. Band- I saw everything. Yeah, I wore cool. I was wearing the bandana, and that was just a personal thing I wanted to do. I was saying this can't be a coincidence. That's a pretty damn. No, no big it, it was it was I, I bought the jersey on purpose and <laughs> I wore it out there tonight. I have a jacket that I have, but. Uh, it's it is still Black History Month, so I'm still mm-hmm. giving my nods. Very cool. Mm-hmm. How would you classify yourself as a rapper? Would you say you're pretty good? I think that's what I want to do most if I don't wrestle. Really? Um, since I was probably ten, I've been writing music, 
And before I got into wrestling, I was actually in a, in a rap group in middle school. We actually did concerts. And then um, I did that in, like, throughout my entire freshman year. I would stay in the studio all night. And then um, coming out of my freshman year, I started training for professional wrestling, and it stole my heart. But outside of wrestling, I still write a lot of music. That's but awesome. um, it, it is uh, rap, and I feel like uh, because of how old school wrestling can be sometimes, it's not everyone's cup of tea. So I try to separate the two and never let the rap like come to light, even though about a year ago I was talked into making up my own theme music and performing it to the ring because Dave Christ was like, come on, kid, it'll be cool. <laughs> and then I would rap it. Coming out to the ring, and then by the time the match was started, like, <laughs> <laughs> can I get water? It, I would just run out of spit. Yeah, it's it's hard to do. So you think <laughs> but Kevin Bennett, you know, right? what I mean? that's what I was like, oh, maybe, you know, and that's that's something he's super good at, and he found a way to uh, integrate the two. And mm-hmm. so I'm gonna give my nod to him and let him have his lane. Do you think you'll ever show or the stuff will see the light of day? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe if someone asked me to or I had something prepared or was asked to prepare something, definitely. Okay. Uh, I love music and I'm, I have no shame in anything I've written, but not everything is everyone's cup of tea. And some things were wrote in, written in certain moods and just, you know, that's that. It all have to make sense. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, if you could have any band play you down the ramp to Into the Ring, who would you would love to see do so? Man, that's tough. Uh, band or... It, Artist, anyway. Okay, okay. Um, Prince. Oh, okay. Prince. I love how we're carrying the theme. Absolutely. I'm... Okay, even more than a Tupac fan, I am the world's biggest Prince... I won't say biggest. I was Jake, about Jake to say, Christ. I know some... Okay, okay. Me and Jake Christ are, like, here on Prince. Like... I mean, his gear even pays tribute. It's awesome. Did you, did you ever hear about the tag team that we were a year ago? Okay, so we were Wendy and Lisa, who were... Oh, my gosh. I saw your photograph for the Rockstar prom yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. was like, what is... A lot of people might have been wondering, like, what, what is he talking about? Yes, uh, about close to a year ago, Jake, Chris, and myself, we started tag teaming at Rockstar Pro as Wendy and Lisa because we share a deep love for Prince and his music and the movie Purple Rain. And <laughs> well, well, like it started as a, we, one day we were on our way to um, IWA Mid South, and we have this thing whenever uh, Computer Blue will come on, um, I'll look at Jake and I, at the beginning of the song they go, Wendy, yes Lisa, mm-hmm. is the water warm enough? Yes Lisa, shall we begin? And we'll always say that back and forth. And one night we were tagging and uh, Jake was already doing the dress up gimmick uh, for his ring gear, and I was like, hey. I thought it'd be super cool. I brought skinny jeans and a vest. So <laughs> let, let's match. And then we're like, the song comes on. I go, I got a funny idea. And he goes, what's up? I go, what if we, what if we call ourselves Wendy and Lisa tonight? And he goes, let's do it. Oh and he was all gosh. about it. So we did it and we had so much fun. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I'm going to book us for a match next week. Cause he, he books Rockstar mm-hmm. Pro. And he's like, we're going to team up. And I was like, can we be Wendy and Lisa? And the fans bit it so hard. And it was, it's honestly the most fun I've ever had wrestling. Awesome. I, like, throughout the entire nine years, that's, that's my favorite. I knew it was a reference. I just didn't know that yeah, it was actually it. something you fully committed to. That's crazy. It's, and it's weird, too. Like, it was the most comfortable I've ever been, and it was a <laughs> lesbian gimmick. I'm, like, pretend. It, but, like, okay. It, a lot of people got it misconstrued. It wasn't lesbian. It wasn't straight. It wasn't, it, it wasn't homosexual. It wasn't heterosexual. It was just a sexual gimmick. <laughs> like that's what it was. There's a lot of yeah. gyrating and vibrating and <laughs> kissing men on the lips. I am looking this up, or I'm gonna like write you to send me links because this sounds fantastic. I can I can send you a link. Please do. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that you were such a big Prince fan. Like I was wearing a. You you might see a picture of the first night I won Rockstar Pro, and there's a ton of like makeup, like smudged down my face, like I was like dumped at prom and cried about it. And that was because that was the last night I was Lisa, and I knew it would be that. So I had to, it had to be dramatic. <laughs> I was wearing like a, a raspberry hat the other day, like a red one. I was gonna put a caption note, and now I'm like definitely <laughs> using that. Absolutely. Oh yeah. See, I just knew where you were going the second you said something. Of about course, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap things up. I want to leave it with the fans. Is there anything you want to say to everybody who'll be viewing? Just parting words. 
I love you guys and thank you for watching because this was the most fun and I'm super excited that I got to be on here today. I'm so excited <laughs> that you're on here. It's awesome. This was a blast. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya.